guys, good morning. And today we are going to discuss a very important topic of organic chemistry, and that is general organic chemistry, which we also call it as GOC. Right? Guys, GOC, general organic chemistry, is a very important topic to understand the whole organic chemistry. Right? This, the concept that we discuss here in this chapter, this concept we are going to apply almost all the chapter in organic chemistry. Right? So, all these concepts are very important for you to understand as far as any competitive exam is concerned. Whether it is JE, NEET or any other, you know, regional exams. Right? Engineering entrance or medical entrance examination. Okay? To understand GOC, General Organic Chemistry, I'll just, first of all, I'll just write down one example and we'll try to understand few characteristics over there, right? So, first of all, the example that I'm going to write here is CH3, CH2, 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 CL. Okay. If you see the IUPAC name of this compound, it is butyl chloride. It is butyl chloride. Right? At first carbon we have chloride, but we are not concerned with the IUPAC name of this compound. Now, you see, all these carbon atoms are sp3 hybridized. Correct? Carbon atoms are sp3 hybridized. So there is no electronegativity difference between these two carbon atom or these two carbon atom or these two carbon atom. There is no electronegativity difference as far as the hybridization is concerned, right? But what happens here between this carbon and chlorine atom? Okay. Now we know that the electronegativity of chlorine, electronegativity of chlorine is more than to that of carbon, right? So, when the electronegativity of chlorine is more, so it will drag this bond pair of electron towards its side, okay? And what happens, the sigma bond or this bond pair, sigma bond pair is slightly shifted towards the chlorine atom. And in this way, what happens, we'll have partial negative charge on this chlorine and this carbon will have then partial positive charge because the electron is now slightly shifted towards the chlorine or the more electronegative atom, right? Now, when this carbon has positive charge, so this will also attract this bond pair of electron towards this side and this carbon also becomes slightly positive charge. But this positive charge is lesser than this positive charge here, partial positive charge here, right? Why so? Because the we because of this charge it is slightly electron deficient, right? But as compared to this chlorine, this is not that much electron deficient, right? Or we can say the electronegativity of this will increase a bit, but that electronegativity is lesser than to that of chlorine, right? That is why it will attract the bond pair of electron towards this side but not to that extent on which this chlorine atom is attracting, right? So, like this what happens as we go away from this more electronegative element, the parts, the positive charge characteristics will keep on decreasing, right? This element is the more electronegative element we have here. So what happens in this molecule actually? We are not doing anything into it. We have just taken butyl chloride. And this, this kind of charge or characteristics will be there in the molecule. Right? We are not doing anything into it. Now what happens with this? What we say that the sigma bond pair or bond pair of electron is slightly shifted towards the more electronegative atom in any compounds where we have the electronegativity difference. Right? This kind of observation is not there in case of ethane or propane or butane. Why? Because both these carbon atoms having same electronegativity. 
So the bond pair of electron will be exactly at the center of these two nucleus of the, these two carbon atoms. Correct? So that is the thing we have. Now, this kind of electron shifting takes place in organic molecule wherever we have what? Electronegativity difference. Right? So in this chapter, organic chemistry, we are going to discuss all those effects through which the shifting of electron takes place from one point to another point. Okay? Now, the coming back to this thing here, this kind of shifting, a shifting of sigma electron, this comes under an electronic effects which we call it as inductive effect. Inductive effect. Now, like this inductive effect, we have another electronic effects also like resonance, mesomeric effect. Okay, mesomeric effect actually comes under resonance only. Then we have hyperconjugation and we have electromeric effect. So basically, we are going to discuss all these four effects in this chapter and how these effects will affect the properties of this molecule or ion. Okay, and in the reaction, we also get various reaction intermediates like carbocation, carbonion, free radical, etc. Okay, carbenes, nitrines, etc. Benzene. Okay. So, because of these electronic effects, whether it is inductive effect, resonance, electromagnetic effect, hyperconjugation, whatever it is, how the stability of reaction intermediates get affected, right? And also we'll discuss the acidic and basic nature of a compound depending on the electronic effects, right? So, that is what we have to do in this chapter, right? Shifting of electron, that is nothing but electronic shifting, various electronic effects we have to discuss and then the application of those effects, what kind of application, stability of intermediates and some acidic as basic nature of the molecule, right? So this kind of, uh, you know, uh, concept or questions you will see in all the organic uh, portion, right? And there you have to apply whether you are doing carboxylic acid or you are doing alcohol phenol ether or you are doing you know, aldehyde ketone we have to apply these electronic effects over there right so in resonance also there is one more thing that is aromaticity that we will discuss which also gives a very you know fair bit of idea that how the molecule is uh, forming in a particular reaction aromaticity we will discuss that that is because of resonance only okay so all these things we are going to discuss in this particular chapter which is GOC. So we will start with the first electronic effects here that is inductive effect. Okay? Yeah. So guys, today in this session we are going to discuss about inductive effect. Okay? So like I said, suppose if I take the example of, one small example I take, CH3, CH2, Cl. Right? So what happens in this molecule that we have already discussed this in introduction part that this chlorine atom will drag this bond pair of electron towards its side because it is more electronegative. Right? Because it is more electronegative. Okay? But at the same time, if I write down, if I write down any other example, so basically this molecule or this particular group has electron withdrawing tendency. You can write down this. Electron withdrawing tendency. This is one, you know, one kind of effect we have. Okay? Now, if I write down this molecule, suppose now another example if I take, it is CH3, C double bond O, CH3, okay. So here what happens again, this oxygen atom has electron withdrawing tendency because of its, um, because of its uh, electronegativity nature, okay. And at the same time, this methyl group has tendency to donate the 
electron pair towards the carbonyl carbon group which is C double bond O here. So I have given you two different example here. In first example, one atom is electron withdrawing and these two atoms are electron releasing group here. Group here. Electron releasing group. Okay. So this particular groups are electron releasing and this is electron withdrawing. So we have two different types of, you know, uh, atoms or groups we have here which one has electron withdrawing tendency and other one has electron releasing tendency. Okay. So in this kind of, in this, these are the two ways in inductive effect through which the shifting of sigma electrons takes place in any organic molecule. Okay. All these effects we are discussing under the various electronic effects. Electronic effects when I say it means what are those with different different effects through which the electron shifts from one point to another point. Okay. So now you see here this kind of effect whether the electrons gets withdrawn from the molecule it comes under minus I effect. Okay, and electron releasing tendency if you have, it comes under plus I effect. Okay, this is very important point we have here, plus I effect and minus I effect. Now, so what we can say, inductive effect can classify it into 